Presiding officer, today's news will be met in the Highlands with shock, incredulity and anger. So, I ask the Minister, why does Transport Scotland, unlike its counterparts south of the border, put all risks of unforeseen costs on contractors? Surely that makes and has made bidding less attractive. And why is it? And we are nearly two years into this Parliament that we still do not have a revised timetable to replace a deadline that every single person in the Highlands knows was never going to be achieved. Minister. Um, I thank Mr Ewing for his question. I recognise his strength of feeling, of course, on the A9 in particular, but also on the A96, which is in his constituency. We have met uh, on this route and on the A96 in his constituency and in the Parliament on a number of occasions now. And I'm keen to work with the member on uh, supporting his interests and, and other interested MSPs, because it's important we get the next steps right. I mean, I think I've outlined to members some of the challenge we face in recent times and we have had keen interest of course at the industry event days when the tender for Tomat and Tomoy was first launched. That was positive at the beginning of the procurement process. We had three contractors pre-qualified for the bid. One of those of course withdrew earlier in the process with a further contractor withdrawing on the day before tenders were due for submission resulting in only one tender being submitted. Um, Transport Scotland's design and build works contract as I think I mentioned in response to Ms Roddick has been used for over 20 years. I, I think some of the points uh, Mr Ewing has made are fair. These are all going to be considered in the wider work in relation to how we move forward at pace with the totality of the sections of the route that remain outstanding. We have, as I mentioned, I think in a uh, response to one of the Conservative MSPs, seen a decline in the numbers of tenders that are coming forward. So we do need to look at um, the approach we use within Transport Scotland. That fundamentally will be addressed as part of the wider advice that will come to ministers in the autumn to ensure we have the best approach within Transport Scotland to attract um, the most number of bids moving forward to deliver the programme as efficiently and as timidly as possible. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, I'm certain that correspondence is already coming in from, from constituents constituents who are extremely disappointed and concerned about the news about Tomat and Tumoy. And I have to say that I share their disappointment. I can't overstate how difficult it will be for locals to believe that this project will be carried out in the face of another delay. And I hope that the Minister is able to provide assurance that the Scottish Government remains committed not only to this project, but to the people of the Highlands amidst continued accidents and fatalities on the road that it has committed to duelling. Can she please give some more detail on how severely restarting the procurement process could delay the duelling of this stretch of road? And can she tell me whether there is an issue with the Transport Scotland procurement process which makes it unattractive to bidders? Minister. Uh, I thank the member for her question. Um, now, I do want to give that reassurance that Ms Roddick was seeking in relation to the people of the Highlands. She will know, as she was at the opening of Inverness Airport Station last week, how committed the government is to continuing investment in that part of the country. And I recognise very much her interest uh, in the route as a, a local MSP. Transport Scotland's design and build works contract has been successfully implemented for the last 20 years. Um, I think the member asked a question around about some of the challenges in relation to that. That is all being considered in the round in relation to how we can move forward at pace. If there are changes that we need to make uh, within Transport Scotland to the way in which we approach these projects, then of course that will be looked at because we need to make sure we are attracting as much uh, opportunity for investment as possible and that bidders are not put off potentially from uh, the process. Now, recent years has seen a decline in the numbers of tenderers, I think it's fair to say. And we do understand from industry contacts that that's largely due to the terms and conditions set out in our contract, of course, including risk transfer. But, as I mentioned, Transport Scotland are reassessing um, that approach in light of the current market conditions, which also sit alongside changes that we may have to take uh, moving forward. We will carefully look at how we can get that best balance between achieving cost certainty, making our contract attractive, of course, to the market, looking at appropriate risk allocation, which is fundamentally important, um, but also looking at uh, the role of contracting parties and improving, I think, that collaboration between Transport Scotland and the contractor. 